Hello everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Essence. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about something called spell targeting. What is that? Well, it is a way of casting a spell upon um, a person, a place, or a thing. How one can do that from a distance. Um, but I, I will have a disclaimer. Before you go casting a spell upon a, uh, a living thing, get permission. Always get permission when you are doing a, a spell. A prayer is fine. You know, a prayer is usually of good intent. That is fine. You don't need a permission to pray for someone. That, that does not need permission. But when you are doing a spell, which may have a more direct impact on someone's life or something's life, you're obviously going to want to get permission. And it's not just that. Um, let's say they say no, but you do the spell anyway. Their energy, because they rejected it, it's not going to hit. At least not right. Not in the right way. Their energy may, like, stop it but it might still like be around them, so it may not have as big an impact or it may go wrong. And let's say someone doesn't believe in magic at all. If they don't believe, they are not going to have any effect at all. And in fact, because they don't believe in it, it too may go wrong. Um, if, they, if they give you permission and they're expecting you to do it, then, it will allow the energy to pass right through their aura, which is their protective field, their spiritual protective force field, and enter them and do what it's supposed to do. But it's almost like if you were to convince a smoker to stop smoking just by talking, and they don't want to quit, but you were to do a spell for them to quit, if they don't want to quit, they're not going to quit because their energy says they don't want to quit. Their souls do not want to quit. If they want to quit, okay, that's something to work with. But always get permission, you guys. Whenever doing uh, any kind of spell, if it's a spell on like a pet, get permission from the pet's owner. You know, the, the spirit does not want to um, have energy coming at it that it doesn't want. The dog or cat or whatever pet it is, you're not obviously going to get a definite or So go to the pet's owner. If the pet is like suffering from, let's say, a disease or something, and you want to do a spell to potentially heal it, um, get it uh, permission from the owner. Because you never know. They might be um, already having something planned that can help. You know, um, you don't want things to go wrong. Sometimes it might, you know, the surgery uh, or whatever they have planned might go wrong and could possibly kill or seriously injure the pet. You don't want that. You, you don't want that spiritual blood on your hands. When it comes to children, get permission from, try to get permission from the, you know, the child. Now, I understand not all children are going to understand what you're doing. Not all children are going to say yes. If they don't want to, they're human beings, immature human beings, but human beings nonetheless. If they say no, no means no. That being said, how can you do spell targeting? There's a few ways. Number one, DNA. What does that have to do with spell targeting? Have you ever heard of someone doing a spell where it required a clump of someone's hair or maybe, I don't know, a sperm sample or uh, some tears or whatever? That is what I mean. Uh, I had a girl at my old work 
she wanted me to do a spell for good luck. And I'm like, uh, you don't have to, but it would help if I have um, a part of you. Some part of DNA. Maybe a tissue you've blown your nose into. Uh, a little vial of tears. Um, I wouldn't suggest blood. Um, maybe a piece of hair. Maybe like rip out some of your hair or cut it. I used to collect bottles and cans at my work. Because if you're not in Michigan, uh, they can be taken back for 10 cents of value. Well, she drank most of it, leaving a small amount inside. And I'm like, that's perfect. So I started writing on a piece of paper. I wrote her name. I wrote what she wanted. And uh, uh, I tried to be as detailed as I could. I just started writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. I filled it with some bay leaves that I also, also wrote on. And I folded the bay leaves into the piece of paper and I folded it as much as I could. I put a few drops over the sink. I didn't want it to get messy. A few drops of her drink over the piece of paper. I took one of my little blowtorch lighters and I burned it as much as I could until there was nothing but ash. And I let the, uh, the smoke waft up and I, I said to the gods, and I'm like, may her wish be granted. May the spell to give her good luck be present. May it be active. May it be successful. And it worked. Uh, her and her boyfriend, about uh, one to two weeks later, end up getting their first apartment. And she's like, thank you, thank you. She was like, oh, I was jittery. And it kind of, it warmed my heart, you know. Because uh, occasionally at work, I'd be, um, we'd get on the subject of something spiritual. And I'd be like, well, I'm a spiritualist. You know, I practice such things. If you ever need a spell, you know. Let me know. Never force stuff like that upon people. You know, just say, you know, you can offer your services, you know. Obviously, it helps if they're believers, too. Because, uh, if you know, some people will think you're crazy. But, you know, I don't care if people think I'm crazy. Yee! But anyway, uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, I'd be like, if you need any help, if you need a spell, I'm willing to do it for you. And they're like, oh, thank you. And then some people are like, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know what? Everyone has their own opinion, so. Uh, so DNA is a great way for you to do spell targeting. Um, so things that can be used, of course. Hair. Tears. Sweat. Blood, which... Some women do menstrual blood, especially to goddesses like Hecate and Morrigan, because um, they're symbols of blood. So sometimes they like to use their own menstrual blood in the ritual. Obviously, men don't have menstrual blood, but if you've had a bloody nose earlier that day, that can be used as well. Um, fingernails or toenails. Uh, saliva. Like, like the girl, she drank the uh, a lot of the soda, and she had a little bit of the saliva left in there. I use that. Um, what else? Uh, semen. Yep, semen can also be used. Um, urine. All of those. Now, keep in mind, if you were to do spell targeting... Say someone gives you a DNA sample for a spell. Don't sleep on it. What I mean by that is, uh, don't wait. Samples like that don't keep. The energy doesn't keep, especially when it's exposed to another energy. Uh, if it's around you, it could potentially become corrupted. It could become corrupted energy, and therefore it may affect you more than it affects the other person. So uh, when I got home from work, and I worked until uh, 3 a.m., so I did the spell at 3 a.m. as soon as I could. And I did that, and I got everything ready, and I'm like... And it's better sometimes to do a spell and then sleep. That way, you, you're not constantly thinking about it and potentially sabotaging the spell. So, um, that's a good way of just not thinking about it. So, um, DNA is definitely a good way for spell targeting. Now, another way is phone spells. 
What are phone spells? I n some people may be like, I never heard of such a thing. Yes, uh, practitioners can cast spells over the phone. Um, and I have before. Uh, not very often, though. Uh, I've done it over Messenger, and I've also done it over the um, actual phone call. Now, how would that work? Well, it, let's say you're in uh, text. And you're like, um, someone you're talking to wants a spell. You can type in an incantation and tell them to repeat it at least three times or more. That way, they are invoking the energy. Now, also, while you're over the phone or over text, you can think about this person. Usually, if you have met them at least once, you have some sort of connection to them, even if it's smaller. But technically, the more you know them, the, uh, the stronger the connection, the more easy this can be. Like, if it's your best friend, obviously, it's going to be easier than someone you just met 10 minutes ago. So, um, when I've done text, I've, I've texted them and I told them, repeat this and I'm going to repeat it too. And I'm going to be thinking about you as I do this. And they're like, okay. So they do it. And then over the phone call, I'm like, repeat after me. So-and-so saw -so this. And they're like, so-and-so this, you know, and I have them repeat it over the phone. And then I'm like, um, sometimes I'll have them listen to my incantation and I'll close my eyes and I'll be like, um, I pray to the gods and I ask for you to bestow upon this person uh, good fortune and good health and uh, they'll be listening to it and um, at the same time I'm doing this I'll say close your eyes and envision the energy I'm sending you arriving and surrounding you and entering your body and they're like okay and it, it's worked most of the time sometimes they're like hey um, the spell I don't think it worked. And I'm like, give it time. Don't be thinking about it all the time. Or else, you know, you could be potentially sabotaging the spell. And they're like, okay, 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 fine. And uh, eventually, they they did work out, just not as they planned. And I'm like, well, then maybe that it was not meant to be. Maybe the way you wanted it wasn't meant to be, but the way it happened was. So that is another way. Um... Spell targeting can happen during a ritual through a picture. If you have a photograph of someone, whether it's an actual printed photograph or a photograph of someone on the computer. Now, technically, I would print them out. Um, if you're tending, if you're trying to do more than one spell, on more than one person. So let's say on uh, your sister, you're doing a good luck spell. Uh, for your brother, you're doing a fertility spell to help him and his wife have a baby. Uh, your best friend, you're trying to get them at a good job. Obviously, you can print them out on the same piece of paper to save paper. Just cut them out separately and put them on your altar. And um, you don't have to consult a deity for it, but you can but technically, all you need is your energy and the fact that you know these people. And go to each picture and, you know, for obviously your sister, be like, I wish good fortune upon my sister. And I send uh, potential uh, good fortune opportunities for money making towards her. And, you know, for your brother, uh, I send him the energy of fertility, may him and his wife have a baby, may it go strong and healthy, and then for, obviously, your best friend, uh, may my best friend get this job, may their skills be recognized by the employer, and may they be able to work there for a long, long time, and have good, you know, work ethic, and good time, and they like the place, and, you know, just be specific, but send that energy, focus, on each individual one. Some people like to take the pictures, you know, right on the back, what you want out of each one, charge that piece of paper with your energy, with the energy you want. So for the sister, obviously, we wanted to get her good fortune. So you would want to write down fortune, uh, potential uh, ways for making money, uh, financial opportunities to come her way. You know, ways to earn more money so that she can save up for whatever, whatever. Close it 
and envision in your mind as you hold it, you know, your sister getting everything that she asked for. And then put it in something metal, obviously. Uh, be careful doing it inside and light it on fire and make sure it all burns. Make sure all everything you wrote, make sure the whole picture burns. Now this will have no negative impact on the person as long as you don't put anything negative into the picture. Uh, some people were like, you burned a picture of someone? Isn't that like evil? Only if your intentions are evil. If it's good intentions, this basically just takes your energy it takes everything you wrote, it takes, you know, the energy you put into it, the prayers, everything. And it turns them into the smoke, and it turns them into energy, so it can raise up past, out of the ceiling, out of the house, and into uh, the domain where the gods are. If the gods are trying to, or the universe, you know, the supreme one, whatever. And that way the universe can morph into what you're trying to do, and the more specific and the more clear you are, the more chance um, it can have of being successful. Otherwise, you're just going to send mixed signals and you're going to get the wrong signal back. It's going to be like a rude awakening, like Zeus's lightning bolt. So um, a picture is worth a thousand words and a thousand spells. Now, when you're doing it, uh, let's say your printer's broken, but you really want to do a spell for someone. You're going to want to get a picture off the internet, you know, of the person. You're going to want to maximize the screen. And try to maximize the picture as long as much as you can to fit, like, maybe the whole screen. That way, the brightness of the laptop isn't, like, messing with your focus. And you can get the full picture. And just focus on this picture and, you know, start your prayer, start your spell, what have you. And you can do many things to uh, enhance your uh, spell targeting. You can light uh, charged candles, charged incense, uh, herbs. You can do uh, crystals. You can do oils. Uh, you can do an, an additional prayer along with the spell. There's so much you can do to enhance the power of these. It really depends on how badly they need them. Like, if you were to do a money spell, the universe is only going to send them what they need. If you ask, like, for a million dollars or something, it's not just going to, oh, here's a million dollars, thanks for asking. No. The universe, you know, you got to work for it. It says, yay, you got to work for it. You know, uh, you got to pitch in. Now, if you already have a job or uh, some means of making money and you ask for a little additional, you know, to help you save or get by every month, okay, that is something it can do. Um, let's say, you you know, you got a good job, but you want a little extra. You might, uh, it might have you get a promotion. It might have you get a raise. It might uh, allow you to pick up more hours at work, some overtime. Um, you might be moving up in the company, you know? It really depends. You might get a better job. So, that sort of thing it can help you with. But it's not just going to up and hand you the money. I can't... Now, usually, you want a specific amount. Let's say you need a thousand extra dollars this month. You know, for something. You know, whether it be something that you want to... You know, a trip you want to go on, or, um... It's something you really want to buy or potentially you really need it for a bill that is, you know, going to be hefty, but you don't have enough money at the end of the month for it. Okay. Okay. So, um, usually when I do a, a, a money spell on my uh, altar here, I take $1,000. I place each $100 bill on the altar. And I, I say to the God whom I'm inferring, you know, I ask for an additional $1,000 this month so that I can, you know, whatever, you know, uh, may my income increase by this, whether it be just this month or every month. Uh, thank you so much for listening and uh, please help me out through these times. 
you know, be extremely friendly and appreciative towards the deity you are trying to invoke, uh, especially if it's just the universe you're trying to call out to. Be nice, but be realistic. You can't just say, all right, universe, um, I want a million dollars. You know, if you could see it, it'd probably be like, and if I were there, I'd probably be like, <laughs> what, you want a million dollars? What's it going to do, fall out of the sky? No, 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 no. The universe makes itself very clear. Sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes it takes a while. But eventually, it's always subtle. You can always do a money spell to possibly increase your earnings every month. But if you don't have, like, a way of earning money or a job or you're not working towards anything to make money, the universe is not going to cut you a break. No, you're going to have to do what everyone else does and work for it. You're going to have to work hard, whether it's in the way of a job or maybe a passion you're working on and you want to get better. You know, you need to work on your passion so that you can start doing it professionally. Um, it can be in the way of... Um, Maybe an opportunity that's coming up. You want to work hard for it, so you want to practice. Um, you know, and that sort of thing. As long as you have an opportunity to make more money, that's great. You could even ask for opportunities to come your way. I do it all the time. And the deities, you know, they send them to me. And it's my right, as a human, as a spirit, human spirit, inside this mess of flesh and bone to say no or to say yes. But they, if you ask nicely and you're on good terms with them, they'll send opportunities your way. That is perfectly fine. If you are out of a job right now, which I know a lot of people, you know, there's a labor shortage and all, um, you can always ask, you know, hey, send a place my way that, you know, I'll be able to work with, some place that has good people to work with and that won't treat me like crap, um, you know, makes good money. If, if that is at all possible, please send it my way. Please and thank you. That sort of thing, you know? Show appreciation. Show some humility. But speak plainly and speak with detail what you want and they'll do their best to help you out simple as that but to sum up this video spell targeting is basically a way of sending your energy to a uh, person place or thing via a spell now if you were to do something for a place obviously maybe it's if it's your own workplace you're like and uh, some orders are late you know you can always do a spell so that the orders finally come in you know if uh, let's say um, you got a shipment ready but you know some trucks are not able to get it to its destination and you're now overdue please uh, you know ask uh, for the people who are you know getting it to be patient, to be forgiving on such things, and, you know, may they, you know, the trucks get fixed or they find some way of getting the product to the person it's intended. Um, you can do a spell for a person's house, you know, uh, if someone has a leaky roof or uh, they need something fixed that they really can't afford, you can try a spell to, you know, maybe find a, a, a cheap but well-to-do repair person you know, to come to the house, or maybe someone they know to show up right at the exact time they need them, and maybe they might get a friends and family discount, you never know. You know, something like that, you know, that is to send a spell to a place. Person, place, or thing. Now, why would you need to put a spell on a thing? Well, people put, um, let's say, for example, this flashlight. People will put a spell on it maybe to protect it from thieves. Let's say um, this is your special uh, flashlight at work. 
but people are always borrowing it without asking, so you want to make sure that there's a spell on it to make people not grab it. I'm not saying put a curse on it or a hex. Just a protective spell. It may... Uh, the spell might have it take on an energy that may repulse some people. They might think about grabbing it and then they're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, or it might make them forget about that. Or maybe give them the opportunity to buy their own flashlight. You know, it, it will keep those uh, from taking it without permission from doing so. You can put a spell on everything, including doors. Um, you can do a protective spell on your home to keep burglars from coming in. Um, you know, try to repulse and repel people with that sinister energy. And I'll teach you guys how to do that uh, later on in the channel. Um, so I'll teach you how to do stuff like that. I, uh, whenever I do a, a video like this where I have more than one topic that I'm, you know, I will teach you how to do each one specifically. That way there's no confusion and I can explain it in greater and further detail. But that pretty much sums it up on this video on spell targeting. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss any new uploads that I've got. And please share this with as many people as you can. Please try and get this information out there. Uh, as of this video, I only have nine subscribers. So please try and get more people to um, listen to my channel at least. Give me a chance. And if you like it, subscribe then and hit the bell button. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later.